All right. Well, thanks for being here today. I, I really appreciate it. Today, I ask you to be here to announce my resignation as the superintendent of the Sioux Falls School District. I, leave, I will leave at the end of the school year, so the end of June this year. Get that tweeted out right away, guys. Uh, I can tell you that the last five years have simply flown by, uh, and it has been a true joy to be with the Sioux Falls School District over those last five years. On both a personal level and a professional level, this has been one incredible adventure for, for me and for my wife. And I can tell you that I am fortunate to have had the privilege of calling myself the superintendent of the Sioux Falls School District. I'll be leaving without a next step in mind. Um, I'm not retiring, just resigning. While I may look plenty old enough to retire, I'm not quite ready for that. So I don't know what's next uh, for sure, but I know I'm resigning and not retiring. There's not an event or a destination that is causing my resignation. Simply, I think it's the right time. Uh, the Board of Education, I'm glad they're here, has treated me with absolute tremendous respect and professionalism for all five, year, all five years of my adventure, adventure. And I can tell you that is great fortune for a superintendent to be in a position to be treated as well as I've been treated by the board. The people I work with on a daily basis have also been a, a true joy to work with and to just hang around. I, I love them and I will miss them. I'll leave with true gratitude in my heart for having had the opportunity to serve the city of Sioux Falls as well as the Sioux Falls School District. Now, I'm going to be here for seven more months and there is a whole lot of work left to do. So probably need to keep this fairly short because uh, the board expects me to keep working. So I'm going to need to get uh, to get back to work. Um, but uh, but uh, I can't. I would be remiss if I didn't close without again saying what an honor it's been to sit in the seat that I've had the privilege of sitting in for the last five years. All right. With uh, with that, that's the end of my uh, my formal comments. Any questions you might have? Can you go deeper for us about why you decided to resign? Yeah, I I don't know that anything I have to tell you about why I have to resign or why I am resigning will uh, will satisfy the desire that you have. And the reason I say that is, I already I already said it. It, it is. I think there's a shelf life for superintendents, and I don't know that it is a number. But I think there's a shelf life for superintendents. And, and in my history, this is my 21st year as a superintendent, I've seen many superintendents who have stayed too long, just a little bit too long, and I don't want to be that person. So that's part of it. Um, I've been here five years. We've got, I think, a lot done in five years, so certainly that's a part of it. I also was waffling as to how long I wanted to go. The, the board, as I mentioned, has been tremendous to me. And I wanted to either commit to being here until the new buildings are open or to move away in a, in a timely manner where somebody else can step in and see that process through. And, uh, and, and then the other thing is, while this might seem really quick to you, um, at least from a personal perspective, I've been wrestling with this decision for, for quite a while. So it's, it's, it's not nearly as new to me as it is to you. Uh, and so I, I would say that. Uh, so I don't know that I answered your question, Dan. There's not, and somebody asked me if my health was okay. Never better. I mean, my health is, my health is terrific. Uh, the job is fantastic. I'll let the board speak for themselves, but I think they would prefer I would stay. And, uh, and certainly from my perspective, I love what I'm doing. So why leave? I don't know, that's a great question. But uh, I, the only thing I can say is what I said earlier, and that is simply, I, I think it's time for me to go. Well, what I think, oh, well. 
Right. We, um, we will reveal what our process, this is new news to us, obviously, so we will reveal our process once we've determined as a board what we think will be the best process to do. Luckily, he's given us, and Dr. Maher's given us seven months to formulate that process and thoroughly vet um, candidates for the position. I should probably wear a mic when I do that, huh? Do you want me to repeat that answer? Would you mind? Not at all. It probably won't be as good the second time. <laughs> Maybe better. <laughs> have your tweets out there because my phone is blowing up. <laughs> I bet. Uh, the, the board will um, come to a conclusion of what we think will be the best process for us to uh, use to uh, do a search process for Dr. Maher's replacement. Since this is new news to us, we have not yet determined what that process will be, but as soon as we do, we will reveal that to the public. What is your reaction, Cynthia? Yes, um, could I first read what I was going to do and then I answer your questions because it might answer that. <laughs> first of all, I, Dr. Maher and Peg, we are so thankful for the four and a half years so far, will be five when it's concluded, that, of service that you have given to our district. The district's in a very strong position thanks to all the hard work and, the, and your ability to listen to the community. The strength of our district is our people and thank you for forging the district in the, into this enviable position. We passed a $190 million bond with a yes vote of 84.5% and have grown new partnerships in our community to sustain our educational goals for our students and staff. Your leadership has been amazing and your family is, to luck, is lucky to have you back more, but this family is sad to lose you. But like any great coach, you have positioned us for success even after your tenure ends. The Board of Education will reveal our method for search process, which I had just talked to you once. We have determined the best method to proceed. We will remain focused on all of our important goals for our students, staff, and community through this transition. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thoughts as well. Yeah, sure. to give Todd's thoughts. Here's one. Make sure which one's which. I want you to know it is rare that I see Mr. Tolkien dressed this nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to find a rental suit this quick. <laughs> I would lie if I said I wasn't horribly sad to see Brian and Peg go. Dr. Meyer has set us up in such a great position. He's built an incredible team and this made our job a little bit easier. Uh, it's going to be difficult to find somebody to fill his shoes, but I think we're a district that's in a position, thanks to him in part, uh, to where we can move forward, we can keep building, we can keep growing. And the, the relationships that he has allowed us to build with the community, we're just going to keep moving forward and continue to build those. I know personally I've learned from him how to behave as a board member and how to uh, work with the community and do what's best for the district. And for that, I, I thank you. And uh, I think he and Peg were a beacon of light in this community for the last four and a half years. And I would expect nothing but um, greatness from him in, in the coming months until his final day here. So it's been a great, great person to work with. He has been a great person to work with. I going to be doing in July? <laughs> yeah. I, I, 
I truly don't, I'm not being coy. I, there's not a next step for me. There's not a plan for me. You know, when I, uh, when I interviewed for this position, I had one grandchild. Today I have five. When I interviewed for this position, my hair was a little darker than it is right now, and I had a little more of it. So uh, I don't know that I can do anything about the hair, but I can spend a little more time with my, with my grandkids. So uh, that'll be a piece of it, but, um, I, but I really don't have a plan, and I don't intend to quit working. Uh, I'm not wired that way, so I'll, I'll, I'll do something. I just don't know what it'll be, and I truly don't. Um, Mr. Tolkien, when we talked last week, said, come on, you got, there's something kind of cooking there. There really isn't. There really isn't. So, uh, and that makes me a little nervous, so hopefully there'll be a little something cooking before too long. But um, I really don't have a plan. I, we may stay in Sioux Falls. We may move back to Nebraska. Um, I may take a year off. Um, I don't anticipate that I'll be a superintendent um, in a long-term situation. Uh, because if I was, I'd stay right here. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a better superintendency than the one that I'm in right now. So it's not about looking for uh, greener pastures in terms of a superintendency. That's just not it. I was hoping real estate, oh sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna, is there anything that sticks out in your mind in the last five years that you know, oh. your best memory, I guess, or anything <laughs> like that? Single best? You know, probably passing the bond issue, um, just because of the long-term impact it'll have on this community. Um, so that that's probably the single best. Um, as you were framing that question, though, my mind went to uh, the development of a strategic plan. Uh, when I became the superintendent in the Sioux Falls School District, it was a district that was already outstanding. It didn't become outstanding because I came here. This wasn't a fixer-upper, I think I said when I first came here. It was, a, it, was a, it was a district that was already tremendous. It was mission-driven, it was goal-oriented, um, but we formalized a strategic plan and we use that every couple of weeks at the board level and we use that a great deal in our planning processes um, from a school district perspective. So uh, I think that's really important. Um, you know, when I first got here, I got thrown onto the Blue Ribbon Task Force. So the statewide impact, too, was something I didn't anticipate. You know, from there I became a member of the, and I actually chaired the South Dakota High School Activities Association Board of Directors. Um, I'm currently the federal relations coordinator for the state. So the statewide impact was something I didn't anticipate. Um, then you drill back down to the strategic plan, the graduation rates, um, I'm, I'm very pleased with uh, many of the things in our strategic plan where we're meeting the mark. Really pleased with a, a number of those things. So I'll, I'll, I'll have another seven months to reflect on those, but those are just quickly some of the things that I'm thinking about. And then figure out figure out what gaps were there um, as a result of that. I would hope the next superintendent would do something similar. They don't certainly don't have to act like I acted, but to figure out what, what, that uh, this isn't a place that needs fixed, but yet it's a place that can be improved. So I, I promise you, I'm leaving plenty of gaps for the next superintendent to fill. Uh, but there are also a ton of good things in place uh, to, to to begin with. I don't know if I answered your question. I, I, I think it was listening to the folks who, who were already deeply invested in the community and in the school district. That I think was the key first thing I did and maybe the most important thing I did in all of my time here.
right. Well, some of you are here in preparation for the board meeting tonight. If you, if you want to shift to that, if you don't have any other questions on this. Let's do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think Andrea has a letter that she'd like you to look at. 